Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. We have another DIY installation and demonstration for you. I'm replacing the existing switch panel in my GMC Sierra AT4 with a new one. It's a much larger 12 gang multifunction switch panel by Oxbeam. Let's go. Now I've been using this switch panel here, the AR800 by Oxbeam for quite some time. It's been super reliable, super affordable. If you don't wanna spend more than maybe a few hundred dollars, this is definitely a great consideration. But here's the reasons why I'm upgrading. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'd know I have lights here, 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 and soon up here, more lighting. So if we're adding more lighting, we're going to need more power. Now my existing switch panel could handle the lighting I'm putting on, but maybe not everything at the same time. So the old one was 60 amps. The new one allows for 100 amps. My previous panel was this one right here. Again, worked really well. You could control it with the panel itself, or you could use the app. The new one allows you to do it on a much larger panel. Check out the size difference here. This one's a monster. So we're gonna put it in a different location than before. But what I really liked is this right here. And it has a very cool feature. It's magnetic. I'll demonstrate the use of the remote control later in the video after we install it. There is this antenna as well. If you wanna get the full range, so we'll figure that out. Now, some of you are probably thinking, cause you've seen the channel before, why aren't I just using these extra switches in here to run the extra lighting? Mainly because I don't wanna have some heavy cabling that I gotta route under the cab, up through the firewall, and then to the switches here because that's how these need to be wired up. Running big wires into the cab is really no fun. And I wanna be able to do all the cool things I can do with the new Oxbeam switch on the truck. And this doesn't have any special features other than on and off. And of course, I wouldn't be doing my duties if I didn't show you the latest offerings that you could consider for your project. So I've got everything laid out on the table here. Let's take a closer look at everything. That way when I'm doing the install, you know what's what. So this is the 12 gang switch panel. You can route the wire on the back through the bottom or the top. There's a bunch of different brackets you can use depending on how you want to mount it. I've got some ideas for my truck, so we'll get into that in a little bit. But also this right here is your fuse panel and it's got all the built-in waterproof relays, all these fuses, extra fuses, and everything feeds in on one side, which is really convenient. And then you have some harnesses that we plug in there, which I'll get into in a second. The funny thing is this panel here offers four more spots, but it is pretty much double the size of the original one. If you forget what it looks like, that's it right there. So same thing, this one's just much bigger and it's gonna be a little more friendly for the amount of things that I have in there that I'm hooking up. And here's where we connect the antenna. Now like the previous model, the new one also has three modes of switching. So you have on or off, you have momentary, which would work like your car horn, just press it when you want it on. And then you also have pulse, which you would set up in advance. And when you push it, it flashes, keeps pulsing whatever the device is, usually lights, and then you push it again to turn it off. When it's on one of the three settings, the LED indicator will light up either red, blue, or green to let you know what mode you're in. It does have RGB backlighting, so we can make all of these buttons match the color of our interior lighting or go crazy and do something totally off the wall. Now, if you look closely, both of these have a little dot right there, and this one has one here. That's your ambient light sensor, so it actually dims when it's super dark out and it gets brighter if you're using it during the day. I really like that feature on the old one, and the new one has it. And I shouldn't say old and new. This is still available. This is now also available. And they have a version of this that has some of the features this one has and would still be an eight gang switch. And we have 120 stickers that we can label all of our buttons. And there's 200 if you're using the app. And if you're using the app, you can actually select photos from your camera roll and use them as custom buttons. If you're wondering what the construction of the switch assembly, this is made out of an alloy or something. Could be aluminum, but it seems kind of heavy, but it's nice, nice finish, very solid unit. And then this is a plastic cover to help keep the elements out, some splashing and stuff like that. To give you cable ties for cable management. To give you some mounting hardware. There's the antenna. We have our remote control. This is IP65 rated when it comes to dust and water. So it's pretty much dust proof. Um, water, you wouldn't want to submerge it, but you can definitely get it wet and shouldn't have to worry about it. We got some heavy gauge power and ground wires. 
we have fuse taps, which I'll show you what I've done in mine. And then we have our remote turn on wire. This is important, so remember this. We'll talk about it later. We have the mount for the panel itself. This is the bus cable that would go from here to the panel. The good news is this is the exact same fitting and is fully compatible with the two panels. So I didn't have to rerun this through the firewall, but I will show you right now exactly where it's run. So if you were doing this for the first time, you know where to put it through. But I would highly recommend watching my original video on this one here if you want to see the entire process of running this wire through the firewall into the truck. But let's have a look at where mine goes. So mine is right here on the passenger side of the vehicle. I fished it in behind the firewall protective mat here, this barrier, and it goes all the way in behind. Not this wire here, but in behind there. And then down here, it's probably hard to see. I'll try and zoom for you. There is a grommet, rubber grommet down there. There's a little protrusion. You can cut that protrusion off and then you can slide the wire through there. Use a coat hanger or something to push it through. And in the truck, I have the cable right here, but I had it come up beside the steering wheel and I had used double-sided tape or double-sided foam tape and had the panel right here. We're going to move the panel into here. So I'll show you that a little later. So I've already disconnected this because I'm gonna route it up in behind there. And remember, if you're worried about safety, this has a resettable fuse, which we're definitely going to hook up in line with the battery. You go from the battery to here, into here, and then that way you're protected. And then each device is fuse protected. So you want to make sure whatever device you're hooking up, you put it with the one that is related to the fuse rating that's closest to what your device is. Let's say you have a 15 amp device, then you might want to leave the fuse that came with your device in line and then hook up to a 20 amp, for example. So the 20 amp fuse would probably never blow because the 15 amp that you left in place would blow first if you had an issue, but there is no 15 amp on here. So that's what I'd recommend doing. You don't want to take a 15 amp device and just hook it up to the 20 because if it gets all the way up to 19, maybe it damages the device, but never does blow the fuse. Now, if your device didn't come with that 15 amp fuse, you could take a 15 from here and you could put it in a 20 amp location and then it would be protected for the 15 amps. They give you actually a very good instruction manual. So I recommend using this if you're not gonna do your install exactly like mine. Definitely consult the manual. We got a sticker you can put on your vehicle or on your mother-in-law's vehicle, up to you. We also have this sleeve that you can put over top of your panel. And it says here, please use this cover in rain and snow, car wash or surfing at the beach. So if you had an all-terrain vehicle and you had a bunch of lighting on it or devices hooked up, this would be a good thing to use if it's going to be exposed to the elements. So just before we go and install this on the vehicle, I wanted to show you something about how we're going to mount it. Now the old panel here had two mounting holes. It also had some plates available similar to this, but these two mounting holes I had drilled into the top of my fuse panel tray in my truck. Just two small holes, but you can see I've got some new screws in there. That's because to accommodate this beast, I have put an aluminum plate and I've recessed some screws ahead of time into the plate so they're not going to rub up against the bottom of this. And now this is going to sit on top like that. It's much larger, but there will be room for all the wires to come out uh, once it's mounted. I'll definitely show you that. So I did have to make a sacrifice and put some more holes into the lid of this. Somebody much smarter than me is probably going to use a tray like this and find somewhere that they can mount it. I just couldn't find anywhere that it wasn't going to block something. So I'm not going to use this in this install, but like I said, you might be smarter than me and find a good spot. I think I might use some different bolts at some point to make this a bit of a quick release. This can still lift up with this on it, but it is a lot heavier and then it's going to have wires. So it'll be a little harder to gain access to my fuses. But if I put quick release bolts in here or something with a, you know, like a wing nut or a taller nut on it with a handle, then I can probably get this off easier. But for now, it just clips in. I made sure all these screws were short. I shaved them down a little bit because I didn't want them to hit any of the relays, but now it still locks in. So I've went ahead and I've made as much room as possible. First, I took off my oil catch can temporarily. It's usually on that bolt there, but because I might be taking off this bracket back here, I didn't know if it would be in the way, so I just took it off for now. I can put it back on later, very easy. I have some wires here that still need to be hooked up. That's for the new switch panel right here. 
but you'll probably notice I don't have an air fill line in this area anymore because I never really used it. So for those of you that don't know, I have an air compressor down here. It is controlled wirelessly or with an app for airbags to lift the back of the truck for better towing stability. But I've removed the auxiliary air fill line because I really never used it. And I have a portable compressor that I can use in an emergency, as well as if I wanna do a proper compressor system for filling things, I can install that in the box of the truck and I could use my new switch panel to control it. So that's for another day, another video. But for now, we have a little more room here. So let's mount the switch panel assembly. Earlier I said pay attention to the remote wire. I'm about to hook that up now, but I wanna tell you a few things in case some questions arise. So the remote wire plugs in right there. This is to be hooked up to a switched accessory in your vehicle to turn the switch panel on only when the ignition's on or the accessory's on. That way you don't kill your battery. But I'm gonna hook mine up like that, but I also have another device hooked up right here this is made by Rough Country. It's made by other brands too, probably the same company really. You hook this up to positive and negative and it will send power to whatever you want. In this case, my remote turn on. So to illustrate, I made a little diagram for you. So this is the fuse panel here. I have a fuse tap that I've already tapped the cooled seat circuit. It's this pink wire coming up right there. And then it turns into this red wire, which is the accessory cable that they send you. Again, I'm reusing my old one and it will send power, looking back at the diagram, all the way through to that white plug. But I put a diode in line because when I have this remote control turned on, when I push the remote control button here and wake this up, it sends power to the accessory. Naturally, it's gonna flow back through this wire, but with that diode here, it stops it. This will only allow the current to flow this way. So this is my solution for not allowing current to go back into the fuse panel, wake up the circuit and the truck, trying to figure out what's going on when it's supposed to be off, but the cooled seat ends up turning on. So little solution there for you. If it's something you wanna try out, I think this cost $25 on Amazon. Wasn't too bad. It really just allows me to either have the truck on or off or carry that remote to turn the panel on and off when I need to. And if you're wondering why I didn't use this panel here that it comes with, I thought about it, but if I put it in the same location, I hit this piece of metal right here. So I bought a piece of aluminum and trimmed it because look how far that one sticks out. It sticks out way out here, which is like a good couple inches past where I currently have it. And I really didn't want that. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. We've got everything wired up. I've got all my old lights hooked up, except I don't have the Raptor lights hooked up because I'm taking those off and going a different direction. So that's in an upcoming video, hint, hint. But we're done here. Now we have to go and hook up the new 12 gang panel inside the truck. So let's go have a look at that. So my plan is to route the panel up into the console area here. And believe it or not, this fits perfectly with a little bit of pressure. It'll fit perfectly right at the top of here. Some of you might hate that, some of you may not. You'll be like, Don, you're blocking the wireless charger and you shouldn't put anything on top of the wireless charger that could conduct electricity. Well, I've got a faster charger right here. I never use this one 
So I'm going to lift this tray up. I'm going to unplug that charger so it doesn't receive power. And then I'm gonna route this cable a little more stealthily in behind the panels here. And then we should be able to try it all out. There we go, that is done. So it's not your truck, so if you hate this, too bad, so sad, it's my truck. And I like the idea of driving and I can see all my switches here. Before they were obstructed a little bit, they were tucked in behind here. And these ones are very obstructed. So switches here worked, but it wasn't the most convenient. But I think this will be. Now, let's see if they power up. So here's that remote I was talking about to turn it on without the truck being on. So there we go, it's on. I can turn it off. Or I can turn the ignition on, do it briefly. But I'm going to demo it like this. So now that it's on, we now have our remote control. I know that number two, this button right here, is the light bar in my bumper. So we are going to test the remote. Yeah, that's turning it on. Let's go out here. Well, here, let's turn it on this way. On. Yeah, it's definitely on. Button two. Now I still don't have the antenna hooked up, but that's the antenna right here. I don't really want to stick this on my roof but we have it as an option. And then here's some of the other buttons. Let's try number 12. We've got the white DRLs, yellow DRLs. I think the floodlights are here somewhere. There we go. So I just gotta memorize what these buttons are, but pretty cool. Got our side markers there. Notice when I turn it off, it remembers what was on. So that's cool. Now if I use the antenna to get the whole 165 feet of range, I'd probably not mount it, you know, on the roof or anything like that. I'd probably mount it like inside a fender cavity or something. I'm not really sure. I'm sure it'd be more effective outside the vehicle. I'm just not wanting to put big antennas on there. So that's just my personal choice. But right now this remote works without the antenna. So I'm gonna put my first sticker on. We're going to put light bar for the light bar on number two. Okay, now we're going to demonstrate the app. So I got the app open here. I go to my Bluetooth settings. You pick the controller that you have. Make sure your Bluetooth is turned on. There's a QR code in the box that tells you which app to download. Now we can easily adjust the colors, as you can see here, and we can adjust the brightness. Really simple to do. I'm gonna get out of the vehicle now and I'm gonna show you some of the other features so we can control the lights from outside and have a closer look. Okay, I'm gonna screen record as well because I'm not sure if this will stay in focus. Let me just show you that everything works. So we got a bumper, got a white DRL there, just some examples for you. Cube lights up top, our grill lights, so everything works. Next, what we can do is we can name our icons whatever we want. So these uh, grill lights are actually called virtual blades. So what I can do is I can go in here and I could call them whatever I want. We could put in virtual, hit save, and now it says virtual. Very easy to customize. Now we go to mode. These are the modes I was talking about earlier in the video. Right now it's on toggle, meaning when I turn it on and turn it off, that's what toggle is. Momentary, go back here, means that I have to hold it down. If I let go, it stops. Hold it down, let go, it stops. Now I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna change our mode to pulsed. So now it's going to pulse when we push the button and we can adjust the speed here. So I'm just gonna put it at medium. We're gonna go back. We're going to pick pulse. 
So it's three pulses, but let's speed that up. So we'll go to mode. We're gonna speed it right up. And that's what fast is. And that's what slow is. And then the last thing you can do is group. So I'm going to make a new group. Actually, you gotta pick the lights first. So we'll do the bumper and the windshield lights at the same time and say the virtual blades. Now I can hit save. It'll ask for a name, we'll call it test. Hit save. Now when I push any of the buttons in that group, all of them should turn on. And then turn it off. Let's say we have a couple things on and we want to have them come on together next time. Just make sure they were both on when you hit this red power button and they'll turn on for next time. A nice little memory feature for you. So I'm not gonna put all my stickers on until I finish the rest of my lighting. That's right, we have more lighting projects. I think I have five or six technically that are still gonna happen with this truck. It's a combination of swapping some things out and making some new additions. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit that subscribe button. I love how this turned out. I really like this magnetic remote. We can turn things on and off and then stick it wherever we want that's magnetic when we're not using it. So I would like to thank Oxbeam for making this video happen. Remember, this is the AR1200 for the 12 gang multifunction switch panel. If you think it's a little too big for you, but you still like the features, they also have another model called the RA84. I'll link it in the video description as well as this one. And if you like the original one that I had installed, that's the AR800. The RA84 is like my old one in the smaller form factor with only eight buttons and the remote only has eight buttons. So that might be something that interests you. I think these are a tremendous value. They do what they're supposed to do. But if you like this video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.